Well guys, we're over 200 hours now into building this factory. So I think now's a pretty good time to do a little factory tour. Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz and welcome back to Satisfactory. Where today we're going to be doing a factory tour and review all of the progress we've made thus far. And of course we're going to blow up a ton of stuff too, as per usual. And wow, I didn't think I threw that many explosives there. Woo. So let's get started here with some general things that I want to accomplish with this factory. Obviously number one, I want it to look cool. Number two is I want to focus on scaling upwards, not outwards. And number three is I want to try and keep everything as centralized as possible. So 99% of all production is right here. And with my production here, I try and do things a little bit differently, wherein I try and split up my inputs, my raw resources, evenly between the processing machines. So for example, a smelter needs 30 iron ore per minute, it's gonna get 30 iron ore per minute. And I can accomplish that by using splitters and mergers in very interesting ways. And by interesting, I mean downright insane sometimes. But it's also everything is getting their inputs at perfect timings. Because, especially on the lower tier items, you want every production machine receiving the perfect amount per minute. So it can run very smoothly. Because if there's any kind of delay, like even if it's a couple seconds, that's going to stack up through every single process further up. So say if there's a one or two second stutter on the iron production, that one or two second delay gets carried over to the next phase of production, for example in steel, adding even more delays, then the delays are pushed to the next production line and etc etc. It just causes a stutter throughout the whole factory and I wanted to try and avoid that. Now a lot of people say that it doesn't even matter if you balance things out like that, and that you could just line up like a bunch of splitters or something. And yeah, you can absolutely do that. And although you might have some delays or something, you can save a ton of space. It's easy to set up, and both ways do work. But I just find it fun to mess around with the math and try and get the ratios all right and stuff. It's like a fun added challenge. So yeah, pretty much that is the big overview and stuff. So let's go inside and take a look around. And we're going to start off with this front building here. This is kind of where all the magic began. And generally speaking, the ground floor is just a lot of basic processing. We have our iron, we have our copper, and we have some concrete over here. And just like the usual jazz, nothing special. I'm sure you've seen this a million billion times. But then as we go higher into the tower, things get a little bit more complicated. Because we obviously have to process the iron and the copper and all the jazz into other things. So this is my wire facility, since it's the only thing to do with copper. We are making a ton of wire, and my goodness, it's crazy. I think we have about 16 constructors all making wire, and all of them end up sending the wire to these couple bins over here. And how I have this all working out is all the wire meets up at a bin, and then wire is used in a variety of recipes, right? So I try and use like splitters and mergers to siphon out the specific amounts I need. For example, I have like, what is this, 270 plus 270, 540? Yeah, 540 coming to this bin here. However, I have a processing line way up the tower there that needs like 240 wire. So that's like half of what we're putting into this bin. So I just use like a splitter and I just send out a little bit out that way. So now we can have another line coming off this splitter, and that can go to another location in the factory. And I do pretty much the same thing with all materials, even with quickwire. Some of the numbers get a little complicated though, and the little siphoning balancer things here can get a little wacky, but it works out in the end, and everything remains efficient. By the way, this is the next floor. We're making quickwire here, this whole place has to get switched around though because in one of the updates they changed the ratio. I think it was 4 Keterium, and now it's only 3 to make an ingot. So yeah, this whole area gotta get fixed. In fact, I should mention this, this factory isn't done by any stretch of the imagination. We have empty floors still, we have things we're not even processing. I don't even, yeah, we're not even making supercomputers yet. So this is only the progress so far. 
Anyway, it looks like some of the wire is coming up here, making some uh, cables and a little bit of wire just in storage for us. Because on this floor, we have our main hub. So I moved this from on the ground up to here because this is kind of like the center of the factory. Look at that. Get to look at this beautiful view every single time we come here. It's absolutely wonderful. Look at the front of the base too. Oh, this is my favorite. It's so nice. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And here, of course, we do our research. We do all our jazz. We craft. We have a bit of storage. This is like manual storage though, like I move this stuff here myself. I could automate it, but <laughs> I'm a little lazy to do that. That's okay, works out. Then I have just a couple storage bins here with some of the essentials. Because who doesn't need five assault rifles, right? Right. And it looks like we actually have some good timing here. So a lot of the floors in between are just a lot of processing, pretty much what I just showed you. All the same dealio, but up a little higher we have our airport no 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 that was it right here because our factory is so tall the moth flies right through the building and we can actually hop on or we can go on one of these belts and we can go fly into wherever we want in the factory in fact over here i made a little base for a radar tower right on this arch so we could fly right over to there and check that out, but it's nothing much really to see. Just want to hop on the moth and go for a bit of a fly. And since we're here, we can check out around the base in the area. Uh, one thing I've been trying to do is build like highways all out and about, just for the trucking, because I have everything centralized. I have a lot of trucks moving and grooving. So we got highways, we got trucks moving everywhere. We have huge truck depots. It's pretty rad. There are some things like the coal right over there that I do bring over with belts, but I try and avoid that because I just really like the trucks, man. The trucks are cool in this game, and I try and use them as much as possible. But yeah, there's still a lot of things we need to hook up. Like we have tons of iron nodes and copper nodes and all what have you all around here, and we'll be hooking them up soon. And I consider these to be like close to the base, so I'm just gonna use like a conveyor belt or something. Oh, and while we're flying around as well, I do have another little factory right over there but I don't use it because it only produces biofuel. And we don't really use that all too much nowadays, so that factory is more or less abandoned. As we get back to the base though, above the airport is just some other basic processing. Like we have circuit boards in there, we have heavy modular frames, and computers being processed. And to be honest, we're not producing a whole lot actually. Like I think it's like, seven or eight computers a minute and then only two heavy modular frames like it's nothing crazy nothing crazy still a lot to work on but that's all right because the sky's the limit and everything will be improved eventually as a bit of a side note though for the computers i am using the overflow method like this first manufacturer has to get filled up till the next one gets filled up etc etc so yeah this can be a little inefficient like when we get to supercomputers we might have some jitters but generally speaking, I'm okay with that, because load balancing at this stage is near impossible, because the numbers are just so small, are so wild, and we're working in a shoebox here, so gotta work with what you got. However, oh my goodness, while we're up here, gotta see this. It's our uh, conveyor elevator area, our vertical bus. So this is where all of the items are coming up. Got all of these belts, bring them all up. It's all spinny, it's all wild, it's all crazy, and oh my goodness, took me countless hours to build these. Because I started this base before the vertical lifts were added. Like, what are they? Uh, these guys? So pretty much I just had to make all these conveyor pulls up and had to manually put in all of these lines and oh, it was a nightmare. But at the end of the day, it looks absolutely amazing. Like, oh, especially from the bottom. Let's see, what, which one's the tallest? I guess this one here, right? Yeah, looks really, really cool. Especially from afar. Really unique look. However, I think all of the extra lines cause a bit of lag. So if that becomes an issue, they might be replaced with the new lifts. But until it becomes a big issue, they're a cool decoration. But that pretty much sums up this tower here. As for like the other side of the cube, Honestly, there's nothing all that interesting going on over here. More processing lines, the same as as they are in the other tower. 
The only cool thing, or at least extremely notable thing, is our drop here. So we have a bounce pad elevator. Off in this corner, you just bounce back and forth between the pads. But then the drop here looks amazing! Check this out. Isn't that wild? And I wish I could use this freaking jelly stuff, but it's all broken right now. Ooh! But it just looks so cool, I don't want to get rid of it. And I'm sure in the future they'll fix the U-Jelly stuff. And yeah, that's pretty much all that's going on over there. So, uh, that's that side of the factory. Covered that side of the factory. What's going down in the middle? Well, just a rock and farts. And our buddy, Mr. Slug. Who I could get, but it just looks so happy there. So I decided to just leave him. And he's all cool. As for all the walkways and all the other things you see, they're pretty much pointless, to be honest. All just aesthetics. Like this back wall. Pretty much just an aesthetic as well, so it's not just one giant open view into this. And also, I guess I suppose it is a bridge. Like it brings things from that side of the factory to this side of the factory. Stuff from like back here over into this part of the factory. Yeah, I suppose this is just a wall to hide a bunch of conveyor belts. That's a good way to put it. And you can see like the space elevator in behind there, some of the lines. It's just a neat little thing for the factory. Also, it's better than being a solid wall or an empty wall. Kind of breaks apart kind of like the inner sanctum here and the rest of the facility. Speaking of, let's bounce and let's see the rest of the factory. So, I have these bounce pad towers. Well, two of them, in fact. Just to get me moving and grooving a bit. Because when you have a tall factory, bouncing is the only way to go. And flying, of course. So just have them all dotted around. Individual bounce pads all over the place just for momentum and jetpack craziness. And there we go! Get a good fly through of everything. Pretty much whenever I need to get anywhere. Which is great! And I suppose we'll just start over here. Right, Mr. Moth? Right, Mr. Moth. So like I was showing you guys, the inside of that tower. Outside of it, just have a little bit of a balcony here. Little road I'll show you in a little bit. And our coal processing plant. So this provides, oh, I think it's 1,200 megawatts of power, I think. Behind it is just a big empty box. I plan on doing some like train stuff there when the trains are finally added. So right now it's just empty. And then I guess we'll just kind of loop our way around starting from here and just going around back to the main hub. So what is this then? Why is it so black? Why isn't it red and painted like all the other buildings? Well, that's because this is our weapons factory. Ever since they added the Nobelisks and the rifle ammo, I was like, yo, we need infinite explosives now. So I spent like two weeks getting this thing up and running. It's bringing in pretty much everything we need. The sulfur, we have the coal, all the stuff to make beacons. And everything runs very smoothly. Well. Kinda not really. This whole thing uses the overflow method because it's gonna be shut down most of the time. And the timing didn't really matter. Cause Noblists and Rifle Ammo isn't used for anything further yet. So it's no big deal. And yeah, everything just gets processed up the tower. It's pretty slow. But we don't use ammo or the explosives fast enough to keep up with the factory. So it all just builds up and now we have infinite ammo and infinite explosives. And we never have to worry about that again. Yeah, it's a neat facility. I like it, works well, and allows us to have a lot of fun. Like destroying entire ecosystems. Or playing fetch with the wildlife. But yeah, that's pretty much our weapons factory. And since we have that, we are usually blowing a lot of stuff up. Having a lot of fun with the explosives. Moving on to the next building though, if we scoot over here, we have a bit of a hub here. This is just where I drive to to get back into the base. We have our fuel, we have our one by one bounce pad tower. You just have to kind of press tap to the right and that just gets you wherever you need to go because the top is covered in more jump pads. And then the building it's on has our space elevator and then the interior of the building is just to build screws. Like we are making 2,700 screws per minute here because there are so many recipes that we're taking them. And I was just like, you know what? We're gonna make enough screws 
for the rest of our life. And we're all good. And similar to the wire, we have a bunch of it being siphoned off on the next floor. So it all kind of gets gathered up into these couple bins here. And whenever we need some, we use the splitters and mergers to kind of take as much as we need. And then from this building, it crosses over this bridge here and goes to all of the production lines that it, the screws are needed in. Also, oh my gosh, this building looks amazing because we have again the old style conveyor lifts. And I've left the middle of the building open so we can always look at them. And yeah, I really like the look of this place. And while we're here, I guess we can check out the truck depot in the middle. So I used to have a bunch of tractors running out and about through here, but then I switched it up to accommodate trucks. And the trucks right now are just bringing in sulfur. I have two free and open spots. But they're loaded with fuel here, and they scoot off to do whatever they need to do. Underneath, though is a storage floor and this kind of acts as a warehouse just to bring in fuel take out whatever's being brought that's all cool most of this stuff is heading over to our weapons factory over there and then underneath why is there a wall here and then underneath here there's another floor which again is pretty much just another warehouse just getting lines from a to b the highway over here is a double-decker highway, where the trucks are driving around up top. And then underneath, I just have belts bringing things in. And speaking of truck stations, the one in the middle is kind of like a mini one. This is like our mega truck station area. This is where I plan to bring in most of the things with trucks. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stops. And right now, I think only one, two, three. I think only three of them are being used. So yeah, a lot more capacity for here. And how this area works is all of the trucks will drive on in, turn into their truck station, drive through it, out this way, and then it'll go around and back onto a highway over here. So they can either turn back over this way, or they can turn over this jump and go on this highway here. And thanks to the new conveyor lifts, we can easily have these truck stations compacted right into like this tiny little space here. And we can bring all of the items just up onto this little bus and things move and groove to wherever they need to go. And like with the screws, we just have bridges carrying things across. Just to add a little bit of something something to the base. Looks really neat. Oh yeah, and then I have two more truck stations. You're getting the getting the theme here. But yeah, these are older ones. There's just two. One for oil and one for Caterium. And yeah, built the same way as the Mega one. These were just built a little bit earlier, so I didn't have the foresight to make the area much bigger. Oh, and of course, one of the most important areas of the whole factory. This little viewpoint here. Doesn't that look amazing? It's my second favorite viewpoint of the factory, aside from the actual front. So cool. Anyway though, two of these truck stations are bringing in just an insane amount of coal. So we have two lines here of coal entering the factory over this way. All four, oh gosh, I gotta do the fly through. It's all four our insane foundry area where we're making steel. Because we needed a little bit more steel for our weapons factory and I went crazy overboard. And now over here, we have this madness where we're only making steel. There are 20 foundries here, 20. And we are making 900 steel ingots a minute, which is, well, <laughs> yeah, wild, insane. In fact, that's not even all of our steel production. We have another little area, kind of our first steel production area. That's just down over here on one of the lower floors of the main square over this way. That's only producing like, I don't know, 45, it's 45 times six, 270, yeah. And that was definitely not enough. Oh, and I guess since we're here, this is another cool little aspect of the factory. I've left this area open just because it looked cool. <laughs> just adds a little bit of character, I suppose. And generally speaking though, that's that, steel stuff, Pretty straightforward, using the load balancers to split things up evenly, lets the machine run very quickly, same dealio with the coal and the iron, 
And really, the only thing special about it is how absolutely massive it is. Because, oh my goodness, I don't even know what to do with all the steel we're producing, if I'm being real. But we'll be figuring that out later. And then just behind our foundry area, we have our oil production in this large open work yard here. It looks really cool. Kind of looks like a circuit board. That's just splitting things up evenly so everything's running properly. I really like this area. It's neat. And we're making like a ton of plastic. We're making a ton of rubber. And there's nothing too special really about the area. Looks cool, designed well, and runs efficiently. And after the oil refinery area, we have a few smelters here just supplying the foundries with iron ingots. And that's kind of it. This area is all ready to be developed. We're gonna have probably another train station over here. And yeah, we have our other entrance here too, actually. This is where all of the trucks come in and out of, at least that are going in the north direction. And the cool thing with this entrance though, is it goes underneath my base through a tunnel. So all of the trucks, they'll take a right there and that'll get them to that huge truck station facility. And then for us, we can either go straight through there, or we can take a left into this area, which goes through my base to this bridge, and it brings us back to this hub area over here. So for traveling out north, we have an easy way back in. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot to mention our entrance from over in this direction. So in case we're like driving around out here or something like that, I have a couple ramps that enter the base. However, I had a lot of trouble trying to bring the road to the hub area that I was showing you earlier. So I kind of had to improvise. So instead of building a road over there, <laughs> we just jump through the rest of our base to get there. So we stunt drivers up in here, jumping over trucks, over our production lines, and it brings us right back here. We take a little bit of damage, but come on. Two points of damage for an awesome jump like that. Well worth it. And for the most part, that is actually everything at the main base here. However, not everything is here. 99%, sure. But we have a few other little things out and about. Mainly our oil area off to the west here. So down this highway, we're collecting a little bit of Caterium from the waterfall area there. And then down here, I think this is referred to as the Gold Coast area. Oh my goodness! <laughs> oh, that was close. Uh, we have this huge dock, actually. We have uh, one truck going along the beach gathering some more Caterium. There's a node down there. And then there's two truck stations here, one for fuel and one for oil itself. And the oil is coming through down this way where we have our four oil nodes and our fuel power plant. So we have, yeah, four, 12 different fuel generators. All fully loaded, of course, producing the majority of our power, which is at capacity of 2950 right now. And we're only using about a thousand. So still well and good on the power front. And the only other thing that's outside my base that's relatively major is this coal depot here. So this is just to pick up all the coal that's used in our huge foundry area. So we have four nodes bringing in like 900 coal? What are these running at? 180 each right now? 360, 720? 720 right now, but of course they can be overclocked a bit more too. So yeah, once we can upgrade our belts further, we can bring in a lot more coal. But that guys is everything! The whole story so far! Of course, though, the factory is nowhere near complete, as we still need to get supercomputers online, deal with the quartz tech tree, and of course, since this is an early access game, I'm sure there'll be tons of new updates. That'll give us more than enough to do. But that's gonna conclude our tour for today, so I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you want to catch up on the series, I have a playlist in the description below. So have a fantastic rest of your day, and bye bye